Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting all new show in store for you this week and we're gonna be all across the state. We'll kick it off over on the sunrise side of the mitten where we hit Lake Huron out of Oscoda for a picture perfect day of fishing. You won't wanna miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan are gonna be in a couple of other corners of the state this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. Jordan Brown is going to take us above the bridge, show you a really cool fish camp up there. And then I'm going to head down near Kalamazoo and uh, visit with the father and a couple of his boys that are making their own lures. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. We're in beautiful Oscoda, Michigan here today, and we have a three-boat charter with a family. Um, they're having a family reunion up here, so we're coming up here to do a three-boat charter with myself, my uh, co-partner Adam Lipinski, and Stacy and Rick Tack up here from RNS Charters. Uh, they're a local charter up here, and we're up here to go out there and catch some fish for the family. It's actually been really good. Um, a lot of lake trout, steelhead, a few coho, uh, a few Atlantic salmon, pink salmon, a few walleye. We, we have like seven different species of fish we catch up here. And so we come up here every year in August and just have a ball. Today it looks calm so far. We've had a storm the last two days, but we're hoping to get these people out here today and put them on some fish. This morning I'd be running the camera on Captain Adam Lipinski's boat. The three charter boats headed out together and started at a well-known shelf about 13 miles out from Oscoda. It's a rare day on any of the Great Lakes to have not a breath of wind and water as smooth as glass. It made for a beautiful backdrop while Captain Adam got the lines set. There were 11 anglers total out here today, all the men and boys from a local family reunion. Randy Tudor from Lincoln, Michigan. And who do you have with you today? I got uh, Chris, my son-in-law, and Jack and Sam, my grandson. My grandsons. Have you been out fishing on Lake Huron before? I have not. Where are you from? Uh, from Allendale, Michigan. Okay, so you've probably been on Lake Michigan. I have been on Lake Michigan, but no fishing on Lake Michigan. Ah, cool, okay. So who's going to go first? Me, you I are, want to. Uh, you want to go first? Yeah. Right. Oh, so you're going first, right? Yep, right. I want to. I want to, yeah. I just, I'm so eager to go out and catch a fish. All right, you're going to eat some of these later? Yes. Yeah, Have you done much fishing on the Great Lakes? You know, most of the fishing I did in Alpena was on the inland lakes, a little bit on the big lakes, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully pull in some fish, I guess. Nice. And you guys are on a family reunion. Where's the reunion? We all met up at uh, a family home in Spruce, Michigan, close to Lincoln, and had a fish fry and just got together and hung out. Fish. Get, it. Get up there, son. Go, go, go. <laughs> Tough fight there? Yeah. All right. 
We got to get that planer board in. Kind of fighting the planer. Yeah. So when, when the planer board gets right up here, you're gonna back all the way up to the console, and then you just keep reeling, and I'll take the planer board off all at the same time. Okay. Oh, here it comes. Captain Adam's gonna wear you out today. Oh, That's the plan. I see that thing. I see it. See the planer board. That's the planer board. You got you got another uh, five colors of lead after that. Oh. The fish gets close, but when you guys help them keep the rod fish like up yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Young Sam was doing a great job battling his very first Lake Huron fish. He had five colors of lead core line to reel in, and even though his arms were tired, he wasn't handing the rod off on this one. Oh my hey. That thing's huge. <laughs> Lake I, oh. <laughs> See what I say? Lake Trout on the five Yeah. I'm going to eat that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat that thing. Uh, I caught that. Nice. You got that. Use your other hand to hold the tail. Just like you got it. Don't, right, let, him don't, don't let him jump off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Your first Lake Trout. Are you kissing him? All right. Nice. First fish in the box. Yeah. How'd that feel? Yeah, it felt great. It was it was a putting up a fight. I got I finally got it though. That thing was huge. That's like my biggest fish that I've ever caught. Sweet. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than watching someone land their very first fish, especially a big lake fish. Sam was still basking in the glory of his personal best catch when another rod went off and Jack was up to try his skills at bringing one to the boat. Look at the size of that thing! That thing's huge! It's bigger than mine! <laughs> you have to kiss that thing. All right, let's get some slime on your hands, eh? <laughs> kiss it, kiss it. I am not kissing it. <laughs> let me see, let me take a picture of that. What do you think? This thing's crazy. This thing is <laughs> wild. We are catching fish. Eight, eight, nine pounder. Pretty flat calm as you can see out here on Lake Huron. We finally got a little ripple on the water, but there wasn't an ounce of wind this morning and high sun, so a little bit slow, but we got a couple lake trout in the box right now and hopefully we'll get uh, into a few more here before the day's over, so. Charter stuff, I just started last year. Uh, Captain Mark, he's a good friend of mine, working with him now, He's he asked me, he's been asking me for, for I don't know, three, four years to, come start helping him out and last year I finally caved in and said let's go and got my captain's license last year and started last late last fall duck season was actually my first charter trips so this this year is actually my first fishing charter trips so that last lake trout we caught there on the downrigger we actually triggered that fish to bite by we, had, we hadn't been getting any bites lately so I started moving the downrigger up and down up and down and on that last up that fish hit as I was moving the downrigger and sometimes those lake trout or any other fish they'll they'll follow the lure down there just swimming behind it for minutes even and you know not doing anything and then that change of speed can trigger that bite and that's what happened right there on that last fish Adam definitely knows his stuff when it comes to fishing the Great Lakes. He also has a creative side and actually makes some of his own gear. So a A3D Outdoors, that's that's my other thing. Um, started that a few years ago, it was just a little fun thing I got into, wanted to uh, start learning about 3D printing, Was just wanted to mess with it. Started making some things for the boat that I wanted that I couldn't find, and then it turned into people uh, asking me to buy it, so that turned into a business and a website, and. Uh, so now I'm making all kinds of different stuff for uh, track mounted fishing products. Uh, there's a lot of the same products out there, um, but I can make some more affordable uh, products versus things that are a little more expensive. So it kind of diver diversifies the market a little bit. Maybe we'll have the Elusive King. You know, <gasps> yeah. yeah. That would be pretty sweet. They are out here. Not too many of them, but they are. Well, it was finally Papa Randy's turn to battle okay, a fish. This line had a longer leader on it, so once the dipsy got to the rod tip, Adam would have to hand line it in, which meant Chris was on net duty. That's a lot of pressure on somebody who doesn't net fish very often, but Chris did a great job. Oh, wow. Yes, that is intense. Papa just caught his. Oh my oh. God. Oh. 
Oh my god! Whoa, whoa, look at that! Look at that! Hey. That's a monster! Wow. Holy crap. That's a monster! I can't believe it! That's a heck of a fish. Holy moly! That, Randy's big lake trout ended up weighing in at 10 pounds, 13 ounces, and was the biggest fish of the day. Fishing was a little slower today than it has been here, and Lakers were the only species we boated today. With four fish in the box, it was time to bring in the lines and head back to shore to meet up with the rest of the crew from the other boats. The family reunion fishing day was a success, judging by the smiles on everyone's faces. There was a lot going on at Wellman's Bait and Tackle in Oscoda today. We work with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we are surveying all the salmon and trout taking different aging structures, weights, lengths, and checking if they have a coated wire tag. Nice. We are trying to help pioneer the fish head collection for the trout and salmon species. The DNR, the local DNR, and as well as, as other organizations in the state have been clipping fish to try and get an idea of what the return rates are. Um, so we have a special freezer here that we collect the heads in. The DNR comes by, picks them up, and they're able to read the tags in the head, which you saw earlier. So we, we try to pioneer that and let people know that there's a place to do it. We're actually, that I know of with the exception of marinas, we're the only fish cleaning station in town, so people that don't have access to a marina don't have access to a fish cleaning board. Um, so we, we definitely put a lot of fish through the storefront and clean them and what have you. And we actually go the extra mile backpack and get them all prepared for people. And you know, that way if they want to freeze them and they're not ready to fry them right away, they can save them for up to a year really. Awesome. How long has Wellman's been here? Uh, Wellman's actually turned 50 in March. Wow. At March of this year, Wellman's turned 50. It was originally started um, because of the, the original salmon, the original king salmon run. Um, there was an opportunity here and, and the, the owner, Ross now, who's the son of the original owner, um, took over from his dad and he's, he's still up and running. If you haven't been to the Lake Huron side of the state in a while, it's high time you stop in for a visit. It's steeped in tradition, breathtaking views, and some of the most kissable fish you'll find right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was way up north in the Upper Peninsula near the town of Curtis to tag along with a group of teachers at their annual fish camp. Uh, we're on South Manistique Lake in the Upper Peninsula. Um, we're on our 20th anniversary of our annual AOI tournament, Angler of the Year. We've been fishing many different lakes throughout the eastern UP and northern Michigan. We started out fishing uh, out of small boats, camping in tents. Now we're renting lodges like we have here and uh, hoping to catch some fish today. Well, this is the 20th annual AOI, that's Angler of the Year, National World Championship Fishing Tournament. Everybody here is from the Sioux, well, lives in the Sioux, and uh, we're ready to go at it. Everybody wants to win, and nobody wants to get the loser, loser trophy. Wants to get the sucker trophy. Yeah, the sucker trophy does kind of, well, it says it, right? Plug your ears. Okay, here's the AOI number 20. 20. May the best fisherman win. Adios, muchachos. And just like that, day one of this two-day tournament was underway. As we made our way along, I learned a little bit about the two teachers I was fishing with today. I went to Western Michigan University for my undergrad and Central for my graduate degree. And um, I started teaching really at the Saginaw Chippewa Reservation um, in Mount Pleasant. Um, we started an alternative school there, sort of, and um, worked there a couple of years, finished my master's, and worked at Mount Pleasant for a couple of years. Then um, I went to Peace Corps for a couple of years. When we came back, we drew a line on the map and uh, wouldn't work below it. So I got a call from the Sioux at Deer Camp and I uh, went up. Interviewed once, 
middle of the year, took the job. Been here for 20 years. A whopping 14 ounces. Well, like I said, you gotta See start you, brother. somewhere. The fishing was nice. pretty slow to start, but after changing locations, things started to pick up. Where you at? Did you get him? I got him. All That's a right. nice one. There you go. Rock on. Great. Good. Good, good, good. That stinking rattle trap, eh? Yep. Golden rattle trap. There you trap. go, Polly. Back in business, baby. The... Now I'm gonna need a... All we had to do was go in a little shallower on the bay. Maybe so. Maybe so. Nice. Oh, that's a nice bass though. Beauty, huh? You're gonna get that's probably gonna hit two, hey? One six and a half. Oh. I know these are weighing a little light, but one six and a half. All right, buddy, it's a long drop. You good? Okay, good to go. It's been crazy slow, but I finally got a bass, so that's good. And it wasn't huge, but I'll take it. it I need three more fish, and I need another. Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> oh, well. Something, buddy. We'll take you, buddy. Something. All right, one in the books. Now we're rolling. Was born and raised in the Sault Ste. Well, raised in Sault Ste. Marie and went to CMU. Uh, and then uh, at the end of my college career, I student taught at the Sioux for half a semester. Got to teach with my dad and a lot of teachers uh, that I had had as teachers when I was younger, including Joel's dad and Al's dad, who was also in this tournament. So we're kind of like uh, legacies, I guess, in that way. Uh, then I went to Ingenine, got a job in Ingenine for six years. Uh, taught me a lot about you know, dealing with people in a small town, because that's what I was not used to. So was a little bit bigger than that. Um, coach football, coach track, coach basketball. When you're in a small town, you pretty much coach everything. Uh, then in 97, I got a chance to come back to the Sioux. Uh, been teaching English ever since. I got a chance to coach with my father, who was a, a longtime coach there for quite a while. Um, uh, I've been there ever since. This will be year 31 and some change coming up. Been at the Sioux, like I said, since 97. Um, and I'm a football coach, a varsity level. I'm a girls track coach. It's been a really rewarding job. And, and obviously one of the perks of the job has been the, the people I've met, the friends that I've made. I mean, all these guys are teachers, uh, but we hang out all the time. I mean, we, you know, we, we have a fantasy football league together. We, we, we fish together. We have a shuffleboard, shuffleboard tournament during uh, Thanksgiving break. We go on spring break together. So, I mean, that, that's just been an awesome perk. And I don't know if there's many schools where teachers have become that close to be that close to friends, but we've been fortunate enough to be able to do that at the Sioux. All right. After five hours on the water, our time was up. And we headed back in to see how everyone else had done and take part in the official weigh-in. All right, we're just finishing uh, day one of AOI, and you see our scoreboard here. So we're going to have our weigh-in, and we've got three categories, bass, pike, and other, and we have a five-fish creel. And so we reveal each fish one at a time, and then uh, we break it down to a final weight for the day. And why do you guys do one at a time, just to build the suspense? Build the suspense, definitely. So it's, it's up to you which fish you want to reveal first through five, if you have five. Total? It's kind of like deer camp with your your uncles when you're a kid and you go up and you're like hanging out with you know people you like and people you respect and um, this camp's a little bit different because we're just a bunch of teachers that work together. I hate to use the word bonding but it's it's, it's, it's a nice connector for us you know it, it, it makes the school year go a lot lot smoother because we're always talking about fishing and talking about places to go and um, you know talking about who won last year who lost last year and the fish you catch it's just it's great and we play cards and hang out and yeah and we just have a good time it's great although the fishing was a little tough in our boat it was still a fun day on the water with a great group of guys special thanks to joel and the crew for inviting me up for a day at fish camp here in michigan's upper peninsula well, when it comes to fishermen here in the great state of Michigan, many of us have a favorite lure. Well, just imagine you could make your own lures pretty much whatever you wanted at any time. Well, that's what you're going to see in this next story. 
A week or so back found me in Kalamazoo at the shop of John Sweet and his two boys, Xander and Zane. I had heard about the incredible plastics that they make, and so here I was to see it in person. I have to say I had no idea what an art form this really is. The color options are endless, the shapes, the sparkle, I was learning a lot, and our goal was to see it all happen, and if time to hit the water to test out the lures. We're, I thought we'd do a blue a bluegill flash, and we're going to do a laminate, so on these rippers you can see what it's going to do. It's going to split it in half, and we're going to have one color up on top, and then a belly color on the bottom. Okay. So what we got to make sure is that it's going in the right direction, and then we'll clamp it all up, and uh, you'll see after it comes to temp, it runs like like crystal clear. And then we're that's when I pull up our recipe that we uh, we use the same recipe for certain colors, um, and we're gonna do a bluegill flash. It's a real common color. Once we had the plastic up to temp, the coloring process begins. With a different recipe for each lure, it was pretty impressive to see how these lures start to take shape. So you really want to start with a little bit at a time. And this whole cup, we'll start with three. Anyway. See how quick that turns? Now in the cup, it's going to look very dark. But you'll see, mix it in real good. And you'll see when you pour it out, it's a nice light smoke. Hmm. And so that's what the top color, the base of the top color will be. And then we'll add the flake in a minute. But. The amount of sparkle that you put in and the color you choose can give you some lures that are very unique. Very little bit of this, just a little bit to pepper it. Just add like a little, like salt and food, just a little pepper hmm. in it. And that goes in the belly. See it's starting to gel up again, so we'll have to put it back in. And see now that adds just that light little pepper to it. Now we're going to put them in there and suck those up through here, place them on there and then move it into, we've got to pick it up and move into each cavity. And after we're done we're going to top it all off along the bottom, or along the top. So, let's see what happens. Uh, yep, slowly push down and hold a little bit of pressure once you get to the bottom. It didn't take more than a few minutes and the plastics were done. I can see how this could be a ton of fun for John and his two boys. Because as the plastic cools, it's going to draw in. So you, you'll, let me just open it and show you. So it's got these gates. So as the plastic cools, you got to make sure these are topped off because that's where the air bubbles could come in. But yeah, and then these are good to handle. You can pull these out, make sure the tails don't aren't stuck in there to get. Stuck. And then there's a. That's one order of baby bass. You can really see how the flake and everything we put in from the top is only. See it's split. It's only on the top from where that's where you got a clean laminate. Hmm. And then you can see that belly, that clear belly, that snow shine puts like that pearly shine on that belly. We decided to hit the water for a bit down on the St. Joe River, and John told me how he got started making lures after the tragedy of losing his wife to cancer just a few years back. She lost her battle on uh, September 1st, 2018. And, uh, so from then on, I'm, you know, I figure I'm a 40-year-old widow all of a sudden. And at the time, the boys are three and five. I'm like, what am I going to do? And Xander starts uh, kindergarten, his first year of kindergarten, the same week that his mama passed away. So we spent the first, that first school year just getting through the emotion process of losing her. And then springtime comes, and we started, I'm like, what am I going to do with these guys, you know? I want to be outside with them, so... I went out and got him some cheap fishing stuff. And uh, so we started fishing and uh, they took a shine to it right away. And then uh, one day I just decided I'm gonna try it and got all the stuff and 
uh, I just started out with just a worm mold and a craw mold and it, it all started from there and then after that we ended up getting a lot more molds and then where we come up with our name 513 Lure Works because we were married May 13th so 513 is for her so that's our way of always honoring the person she was and keeping mm. her with us. Mm. It sometimes amazes me how folks can take the hard things that life throws at them and somehow not only make it through, but to see good even through the pain. John not only is being there for his kids, but the love of fishing and now lure making, well, it's bringing them closer together. And who knows, maybe changing the fishing industry one plastic bait at a time here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. There's all sorts of summertime fun still headed your way on the show here. We'll take you to northern Michigan to do some fishing. We'll do some underwater activities as well and everything in between. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. Of course, you can do that through our website, social media platforms, YouTube, lots of places that you can be checking us out. And make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. So much good stuff coming. So many things to do around the state of Michigan. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a